Johnny presents the Milton Burl Show. Make no mistake, of all leading cigarettes, Philip Morris, and only Philip Morris, is recognized by eminent nose and throat specialists as definitely less irritating. No other cigarette can make that statement. From Radio City in New York, here is the Milton Berle Show. With Bert Kelton, Jack Albertson, Johnny Gibson, Mary Ship, Billy Sands, Charlie Irving, our singing star Dick Farney, Ray Block and his orchestra, and yours truly, Frank Keller. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. You're underrating them. <laughs> <laughs> this week marks the 100th anniversary of the struggle for women's rights. We now bring you a man who has spent years fighting for women. But it's no use, he just can't seem to get one. And here he is, Milton Berle. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Gallup, I, I don't know anything about women. I, Milton Kinsey Report Burl. I don't know anything about women. Why, when I was ten, my father took me aside and told me all about the birds. And you know what happened? When I was fourteen, they caught me going steady with a woodpecker. But we're saluting women and the opportunities that they have. And Mr. Gallup, just last week, imagine, imagine a girl living in a small apartment on the east side, married Winthrop Rockefeller. What a lucky guy, finding a girl with an apartment. <laughs> but the big news in New York this week is the new subway trains. Yes, and I understand they're quite different. Different? Why, well, those new subways have all the latest improvements. During the rush hour, it's easy to get out of them. When the subway comes to a stop, it rocks back and forth. That's to break the suction between you and the guy next to you. <laughs> between you and the guy next to you. <laughs> the more I think of that joke, the more I don't want to think of it. <laughs> but, Mr. Gallup, the new subways, they're, they're better than the old ones. When oh, yeah. the old subways came to a stop, they'd always be a big jerk, and he'd push you back in. But where... <laughs> joke is out of the world, isn't it? <laughs> Should have been out of the script. But we're discussing, we're discussing women's fight for equality. Yes, Burl, and just this week, a woman achieved the greatest victory since they won the right to vote. A victory? Why, just the other day, in an impressive ceremony in the White House. Yes? With high government officials standing by. Yes? An agreement was finally reached. Yes? Whereby Margaret gets to use the piano half the time. <laughs> oh, Mr. Gallup, that was cute. That was just too, too... Now, what was that word? Jazzy. Yeah, jazzy. That's it. <laughs> Mr. Gallup, you're so full of jokes tonight, you must have had a blood transfusion. And we must have used Henny Youngman's blood. But on... <laughs> Henny Youngman's father is on. <laughs> but on with our tribute to women and our salute to their gallant struggle for their rights. Yes, women's fight for freedom was a gallant one. In 1850, when it looked as if the movement for women's rights was falling apart, a great event took place that pulled them together, gave them support where they needed it, and gave the movement new shape, the invention of the girdle. <laughs> With the 19th Amendment giving them the right to vote, women began taking a new interest in their personal appearance. Before this, married women had little time to devote to their appearance. Consequently, when a husband got a look at his wife in the morning, he would say... <laughs> But today, appearance means everything. Before a woman goes to bed, she puts her hair up in curlers, creams her face, puts on a chin strap, and when her husband sees her in the morning, he says, ah! <laughs> Thank you, Tex and Jinx. Yes, women have fought for and gained their freedom. But today, in New York City, comes a new threat to their independence. A law which would forbid women from entering bars and taverns unescorted. Ladies, to show you how not to behave in a cocktail lounge, here is Mildred Burl. Oh, bartender, bartender! You, big belly. <laughs> this way. Uh, what'll it be, lady? <laughs> what it be? <laughs> Just... <laughs> Just something light, something light. Give me a triple martini, please. 
a martini? Here it is. I'll just nurse it along. <laughs> Shoot me another. Another martini? No, no, I know. I'll have a Bronx highball. A Bronx highball? Yeah, that's a tall glass of dirty snow with some garbage on it. <laughs> I'm so clever with my new teeth. Oh, now, look, lady. Oh, I know what. I know what I'll have. What's this new drink that the girls are all talking about? Uh, a Mickey Finn? A Mickey Finn? Yes. Uh, give me a double. A double Mickey Finn? Yes. Okay, here you are. Oh, what a pretty drink. It's melting in the glass. <laughs> well, here goes, down the hatchet face. Geronimo! <laughs> Gee, that was good. <laughs> Funny, that drink had absolutely no effect on me. <laughs> Why, I could drink... <coughs> <laughs> Did anybody get that license number? <laughs> Bartender, what's the matter? Suddenly you look so short. Lady, you're standing on the bar. <laughs> <laughs> that's the most preposterous... That's the most... I've never been... Where's the powder room? <laughs> oh, I feel so good. I'm looking over a four-leaf cloak. <laughs> Bartender, make that drunken hag over there stop staring at me. Lady, you're looking in the mirror. <laughs> I'm looking in the mirror. <laughs> Bartender, nobody loves me. Nobody understands me. Do you think that I'm beautiful? Yes, lady. Do you, th you, 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 you think I... Do you, th do you think I'm, I'm glamorous? Yes, lady. Do you, do, you, do you think I'm fascinating? Yes, lady. Bartender, do you know what? What? <laughs> You're drunker than I am. <laughs> now, stop fritzing around. Give me a drink. No. Just give me a shot. No. Just give me one shot. One shot? Yes. Okay, here. Ow! Ladies and gentlemen, enough words have been written about cigarettes and smoking pleasure to fill every library from here to Timbuktu. But you will never hear words that make more sense, words that are more important to you who smoke than the words you're about to hear now. For these words were written by one of America's top-ranking doctors. Listen to what the doctor had to say. In cases of irritation of the nose or throat, it's my usual practice with my patients who smoke to suggest that they change to Philip Morris. And why does the doctor advise this change to Philip Morris? Listen. The reason for this advice is that I'm convinced that they are less irritating than other cigarettes. Remember, if your cigarette leaves your throat dry and parched, if it makes you cough or leaves a stale, musty taste in your mouth, these definitely are reasons for a change to Philip Morris. So join the thousands who every day are discovering in Philip Morris a cleaner, fresher, milder smoke, a deeper, richer smoking pleasure than they've ever known before. Yes, call for Philip Morris. And remember, of all leading cigarettes... The superiority of Philip Morris and only Philip Morris is recognized by eminent nose and throat specialists. No other cigarette can make that statement. That was a few bars of Lady Be Good, played by Ray Block on the Philip Morris Orchestra. Bravo, Ray. Magnifique. Wunderbar. Bien -o, grandioso. In plain English, Nothing. <laughs> Good old Ray. He's a little tired tonight. He was out all day with Petrillo, short-circling jukeboxes. <laughs> I love you, Ray. I love you madly. M-A-D-D-E-L-L-Y. <laughs> and now, as we continue our salute to women, we present... Women's Forum Tonight. Women's Forum Tonight. The question, if does, does everything... Why doesn't it do something for the hags who go out with Milton Berle? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gallup. Now, let's have questions from the audience. All right, let's start with this gentleman in the third row pasting his wife's false eyelashes on his bald spot. <laughs> yes, sir? Uh, Mr. Burl, I represent a women's club. A women's club? Yes, sir. On the basis of your jokes, they have voted you the man of the year. My jokes made me the man of the year? Yes, the year 1872. <laughs> Thank you, Hobart Bosworth. 
Now, let, let us go on. All right, this patriotic young man in the first row carrying his father to the army recruiting station. <laughs> what is your name, young man? My name is Marmaduke Guy Henry Beveridge Strackmore Wembley Natchville Van Pelt III. It is? I'm not the Marmaduke Guy Henry Beveridge Strackmore Wembley Natchville Van Pelt III from England. Oh, you're not, eh? No, I'm the Marmaduke Guy Henry Beveridge Strackmore Wembley Natchville Van Pelt III from the Bronx. Oh, I see. People that are close to me don't call me Guy, Guy Henry, Henry Beveridge, Beveridge Strackmore Wembley Natchville Van Pelt III. I see. What are the people who are close to you call you? Stinky. <laughs> All right, Stinky. You... <laughs> You have a question that has to do with women? Look, why don't you knock off already with all them foolish questions? Well, I thought... Every week you're an authority on something else. This week you're all of a sudden Beatrice Fairfax. No, I just... Snoop, Snoop, Snoop. Always sticking your big fat nose in everybody's business. I just... I should take advice from you about women. I'll die a bachelor. Listen... You're such a doll. Why are you the only guy in New York who sits alone on the Paramount balcony? Please! I am on a shotgun! <laughs> We must try and control ourselves. Since this is a woman's forum, let's hear from one of the fairer sex. A very, very beautiful young lady standing next to me. Or a lady right here, sitting alone originally. Of course, she opened a bad oyster. And what is your name, uh, <laughs> What is your name, madam? Tallulah Feeney. I'm a homemaker. I see. And you have a question that has to do with women? Yeah. How can I stop my husband from looking at other women? He's like a kid in a candy store. Always looking, and any minute he's liable to touch. <laughs> Your husband looks at other women? Once on a street corner, he gave a woman the eye. <laughs> he gave a woman the eye? He didn't exactly give it to her. Her husband knocked it out first. <laughs> Boy, that's terrible. He spends all his time in burlesque shows. No kidding. He comes out with such a pair of bloodshot eyes, cars keep pulling up in front of him, waiting for him to change. <laughs> No wonder. He's in them burlesque show so much. Yes? At night, he won't even take off his tie unless I applaud. <laughs> That's a goodie. Tell me, um... <laughs> tell me, Mrs. Feeney, has the new look bothered him? Bothered him? If you think the new dresses are long, you should see his puss. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Feeney, do you have the new look? With the husband I got, I let other women have the new look. And you? I got the old schnook. Thank you, Mrs. Feeney. Thank you very much. As a fitting climax of our woman's forum, we are very honored to present a man who has devoted his life to respecting the rights of women. He is that rugged paragon of brute masculinity who has just chosen Mr. Model Husband of 1948. None other than Big Mike Featherfield. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Featherfield. Thank you, Mr. Brown. <laughs> This is indeed a most glorious and heartwarming occasion for me to thank the thousands of women who have had a good look at me and then gone home with a new and greater appreciation of their husbands. Mr. Featherfield. Mr. Burrell, could you hurry this up? Mm. There are four men waiting for me outside. Friends? Paul bearers. <laughs> Mr. Featherfield, why don't you tell them that you're still alive? I did, but they talked me out of it. <laughs> Mr. Featherfield, as America's model husband, you must have a wonderful association with your wife. How about that? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Burl, in all our years of married life, I was separated from my wife only once. What happened? The leash broke. <laughs> Mr. Featherfield, what ever made you get married? Marriage is a gamble, and I come from a gambling family. Mm -hmm. My father was a jockey. A jockey? Yes. Dad was doing all right until he lost his head. He lost his head? How? Tall horse, low wire at the finish. <laughs> well, tell me, Mr. Featherfield, has your marriage been blessed with children? Who? Ha! Huh? <laughs> Mr. Burl, we have 27 children. 27 children? Yes. For 30 years, it's been nothing but the pitter-patter of tiny feet. Just when one pitter-patter peters out, another pitter-patter patters in. <laughs> Seven little children, Mr. Featherfield. You must have a very big house. Oh, yes. It has 27 rooms. I see. Each baby has a room? No, we keep all 27 in one room. Then what's in the other 26 rooms? 
diapers. Thank you very much, Mr. Featherfield. Thank you. Here's our young singing star, Dick Farney, to sing pianissimo. The melody was playing pianissimo. The harmony was so very sweet. I can't remember the name of that song, but I do remember dancing in your arms. And then a voice came through pianissimo with lovely words that seem to repeat. I love you, darling, but all I recall were the words you whispered dancing in my arms. Pianissimo means soft and low, and soft and low are your sighs. Darling, now I know that tender day. Was love shining in your eyes, and then we stole away, pianissimo, and kissed goodnight while stars danced above. I can't remember the name of that song, but I do recall it helped us fall in love. It helped us fall in love. Excellent, Dick Farney. Well, wonderful. Ah, there's something grand about singing. Oh, it, it lightens the heart. It really... That, that's my Uncle Julius's philosophy. Whenever he's in trouble, he sings. He sings to the district attorney. <laughs> sings to the district attorney. <laughs> I murdered that one, didn't I? <laughs> yes, sir. Um, <laughs> there are people out there, aren't there? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what an athlete my uncle would have been if the Olympic only had an event called Jumping Bail. Believe me, he... <laughs> my uncle has been in stir more often than the paddles on a mixmaster. I will never forget... Burl, my... Burl, we're discussing women's rights. Yes, we are, Mr. Gallup, and I'm definitely for the women. Except when your wife's club puts on those amateur theatricals. Just last week, I got involved in one of them. It all started one night when I was about to leave the house. And I'll never forget the... Well... Goodbye, darling. Milton, you're not going out tonight. Oh, darling, there's an important meeting of my Friars Club. Bert Lahr is giving a report on the condition of the track at Hialeah. <laughs> and if I don't show up, they'll all think I'm too rich to care. Milton, starting tonight, you're going to start doing something for my club. Your club? Yes, the Enlightened Women of Jackson Heights. We're raising a hospitalization fund. A hospitalization fund? Yes, for our members who fall off the stage on quiz programs. <laughs> Oh, fine. And we have plans for you. That's why Sam and Martha Harrison are coming over tonight. Sam Harris? I, I won't do it. That's Sam Harrison and his ideas. He's still drunk with that power he had when he was an air raid warden. <laughs> I, I won't do it, I tell you. Oh, there they are. Oh, brother. Come in. Hi, Milty. <laughs> On the way over, I said, wait till Milty hears our plan. He'll go for it like a cow's tail for a fly. That's just what I said, isn't it, Martha? Yes. <laughs> oh, hello, Martha. Sam, what is this plan? Milty, to raise the money, the girls are going to put on a play. Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet? You're crazy. No one will come to see that. Those, those Shakespeare plays always lose money. Forget the whole thing. Milty, we want you to play Romeo. It's the most ridiculous... Mm. <laughs> Romeo? Yeah. Mm, sounds good. Should make a fortune. <laughs> so I'm going to be Romeo, eh? Well, who's who's going to play Juliet? <laughs> Should we tell him, Martha? Yes. Oh, no, please, not Martha. Yes. Sam, no, please. Milton, why don't you run through the balcony scene with Martha? But, darling... Now, here are the scripts I brought along. Come on, Milty. Oh. Give oh, us some music, Mrs. Burl. 
but soft. What light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon. Oh, it is my lady. Yes. <laughs> My love. Yes. (laughs) She speaks, yet she says nothing. Two of the fairest stars in all the heavens having some business do entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres till they return. The brightness of her cheek would shame the stars as daylight doth a lamp. Oh, that I were a glove upon that hand. Might I then touch that cheek? Yes. (laughs) She speaks... Oh, speak again, bright angel. Yes. She speaks again. Juliet, by a name I know not how to tell thee who I am. My name, dear saint, is hateful to myself because it is an enemy to thee. I, sweet Juliet, am a Capulet. And you? Yes. (laughs) You are a Montague. Yes. Ah, blessed, blessed night. I'm afraid this is all but a dream. But I must fly. Juliet. Yes? My heart. Yes? My sweet. Yes? My dove. Yes? My life. Yes? I go. But wilt thou leave me so unsatisfied? Yes. Then I must... Ah, oh, this is ridiculous! Ridiculous? Yes, it's ridiculous. Ridiculous? Mildy, it was beautiful. Look in my eyes. Tears. Sam, you're crying. It was beautiful. Mildy, this will be the biggest thing to hit Jackson Heights since Cohen on the telephone. <laughs> no kidding, Sam. Gee, Milty Burl is Romeo. <laughs> if you want this costume made. But soft. What light through yonder window breaks? It is the east and Juliet is the... Ouch! (laughs) Here, will you please watch those pins? Well, I can't help it. I never made tights before. Some tights. You can at least take the buttons off the back so people won't know it's my winter underwear. (laughs) I I better rehearse. But soft. Watch Sam through... Oh, the Harrisons. Hand me my pants, dear. Come in. Hi, I'm Milty. <laughs> Hello, Sam. I, I got the part memorized. I want you to listen. It's wonderful. But soft. What light from the window breaks? we're not doing the play. It is the L, yeah. <laughs> You're not doing the play. Milty, let's face it. We've tried everything. Martha just can't remember her part. <laughs> she can't remember... What, is she stupid or something? Yes. <laughs> Milty, wait till you hear this. We're doing a musical. A musical? Yes, a gay, rollicking, Florida musical. Oh, Milty, with that golden voice of yours. Me, 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 me. Blend it with mine. Me, me, me. Boing. <laughs> Sam, wait a minute. You're singing with me? Ah, oh, picture it, Milty. Two handsome blades like us. And guess who our beautiful leading lady is? Sam. No. Yes. <laughs> Sam, it's a musical. If Martha Wait, can't Wait, you hear even... it, Milty. Let's run through the opening Floridora sextet. But, Sam... Music, Mrs. Burrell. Oh, oh, tell me, pretty maiden, are there any more at home like you? Yes. <laughs> you mean there are a few? Yes. There are just the sweet. Yes. And quite a Yes. Oh, oh, stop it, please, will you? I'm sorry, Sam. This is not for me. Get Jackie Heller or Happy Felton or somebody. But, Milty, the women's club depends on you. Sam, I'm not making a jackass out of myself. Jumping around on a stage and singing to Martha. But, Milty, there's a spot in the show where you tell jokes. Sam, it's no use. I tell jokes. <laughs> hmm. Sounds good. He'll do it. That's right, Sam. Let's see. I'll, I'll open the show with that one. Hello, folks. I just flew in from California. Boy, are my arms tired. I'm waiting. Them. That's what I'll do, Sam. Hello, Joe. Oh, 
Oh, tell me, pretty maiden, are there any more at home like your boy? I sent tickets to every producer in town. This will make me another street singer. <laughs> oh, that's Sam coming over to rehearse. Come in, Sam! Hi, Melty! Sam, Sam! Let's rehearse the musical. Oh, tell me, pretty maiden. Melty, we're uh, not doing it. Melty, we're not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> We're not doing it, but Sam... Milty, it finally happened. Martha got laryngitis. <laughs> if she'd only kept a big mouth shut. <laughs> so the whole thing is off? Off? Milty, you were right in the first place. We're doing Shakespeare. Oh, that's good. Now, I'm Romeo. No, we're doing Hamlet. Oh, I'm, I'm Hamlet. No, I'm Hamlet. You're Hamlet? Who am I? You're my father's ghost. <laughs> now I'm a ghost? <laughs> no, no, Sam. Milty, you've got the biggest part. Sam, I... Mm. Biggest part? Here's the script. Let's go through it. Mm. Now, get the scene. It's a stormy night. Sounds good. I, Hamlet, see you for the first time. Yeah. I speak. You speak. Mm. The king doth wake tonight and takes his rose. But hark, what do I see before mine eyes? King, father, royal dean, oh, answer me. Art thou the ghost of my father? Yes. <laughs> Please. Art thou doomed for a certain term to walk tonight? Yes. <laughs> Sam. This bliss toll is... Sam. If thou didst ever thy dear father love... Sam. Then speak. Did my foul uncle murder thee? Yes. <laughs> Sam. I cruel face. Sam. Who shall avenge this most foul and unnatural murder? Sam. I mean, Sam. Oh, horrible, horrible. Who is most horrible? Sam. Oh, fire. Sam. Then must it be I to wreak this vengeance? Yes. Sam. No. Sam, please. I. What shall I do? Go home, go home. Father, royal day. Go home, go home. Speed, ghost, tell me what to do. Go home, go home. Ah, then back to yon castle shall I go. Yeah, go and say hello to Martha. Go home. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be back in just a moment. In the meantime, here's Ken Roberts. Friends, remember the words of the eminent nose and throat specialist whose statement you heard a little while ago. In cases of irritation of the nose or throat, it's my usual practice with my patients who smoke to suggest that they change to Philip Morris. Yes, there's a difference in Philip Morris that distinguishes it from any other leading brand. And to you, that difference means a cleaner smoke, a fresher, milder smoke than you've ever known before. Remember, of all leading cigarettes... The superiority of Philip Morris and only Philip Morris is recognized by eminent nose and throat specialists. No other cigarette can make that statement. Thank you, Ken. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to mention that this Saturday night I'll be in Miami Beach, Florida with Ed Sullivan. We're going to stage a mammoth show for the Heart Fund. If you're anywhere near there, drop in. It's a very, very worthy cause. Good night, everyone. For a cleaner, fresher, milder smoke, join the millions who call for Philip Morris, America's finest cigarette. Hello? Hello, testing. One, two, three, four, five. That's it, five. Pipe smokers try Revelation Pipe Tobacco, a smooth blend of five tobaccos. Yes, relax, take five, take Revelation, a fine pipe tobacco. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.